Hello and welcome to RFEFP part four, the earth bows. Now I'm Nebi, wishing you a pot of gold at the end of this one folks. Now as previously mentioned in part three of this series at hand, and please check it out in case that you missed it. Now in short, there is a form of reflection and a type of refraction on the plane earth. And this is curved, if you will, so is represented as a result of that. And this in the form of rainbows and the other type of bows on the plain earth. Now they all seem to form the shape of an arced or arched semicircle, very different obviously to a so-called curving light from a lighthouse. Now, a rainbow is a phenomenon that is caused by reflection and a type of refraction of light in water droplets, resulting in a spectrum of light appearing in the sky. They also take the form of a multicolored circular arc. And why does it seem to take this very shape, one may ask? Because it is simply reflecting off something above folks. Now what this is called, and what this must be made from, must be a form of glass or clear metallic reflective or crystalline substance, so to actually reflect from, and thus create that very arched shape in the sky. Now, we all know that any man, woman or child can make a rainbow inside with a torch, a glass of water and a piece of paper. This is quite good fun if you know what you're looking for, because here's the test folks. Why not try it actually covered with a big glass bowl filled with and without water? You will be amazed of the results. Just try it yourself folks. So the question is, what actually creates the glass prism or the mirror on the plane outdoors to form this arced shape? And if you're one who is actually thinking, well, Nibi, wait a minute, rainbows and all the other earth bows are supposed to be a full circle. Well, really? Well, you show me a, a, a rain, a fog or a snow bow in full circle when I'm stood on flat ground watching it with my own two eyes recording it, that simply won't happen because no real bow on plain earth has ever been recorded or snapped full circle without manipulation. So to make my point, here are a few, a couple fish-eyed fake ones and computer manipulated ones so you can make up your own, own mind, real or fake, photo or painting. <laughs> it's just another disinformation act on the gullible general public folks to make you think that you are blind from your own natural senses. So you are not seeing exactly what you really are seeing. Earth doesn't move, the sun and move do, and our earth bows are reflected shapes of somewhat very mysterious factor from above, and certainly not a full type of circle. And I do love circle, folks, don't I? Now your eyes do not lie, folks, unless you make them. Rainbows caused by sunlight or moonlight always appear in the section of the sky directly opposite the sun or moon, proving that the bows are a form of reflection from something above, as the same thing happens when you or I create one indoors with that artificial light source with the same angle of direction. Heliotheory states, in a primary rainbow, the arc shows red on the outer part and violet on the inner side. This rainbow is caused by light being refracted when entering a droplet of water, then reflected inside on the back of the droplet and refracted again when leaving it. Now, very complicated in a sense where in a double rainbow, a second arc is seen outside the primary arc and has the order of its colors actually reversed with red on the inner side of the arc and this is caused by the light being reflected twice on the inside of the droplet before leaving it. Now it's amazing isn't it how versatile those little rain droplets are. So according to the current theory, at the center of the rainbow, the raindrops are reflecting light right back to us. Then from 180 degrees to about 140 degrees, we also get a deviation that causes white light. 
and this deviation causes just as much brightness as a straight reflection since the rainbow is not brightest right at the center. The whole center is equally as bright. So at about 140 degrees, we start to get color. From 138 degrees to 129, we get no refraction, no reflection or deviation, or at least none that can actually reach our eye. But from 129 degrees to 127, we get full breaker refraction inside the raindrop, causing a reverse rainbow, and then below 127 degrees, we again get some brightening, but not as much as from 140 degrees to 180 degrees. If a single raindrop can cause so many different refractions, including a one bounce reflection at any angle from 90 degrees to 180 degrees, a two bounce refraction over a wide range of angles, and a three bounce refraction over many angles, and a four bounce refraction over many, many angles, plus other bounces, what we have is called scattering and not refraction or deviation as it's known. Scattering, folks, causes white light, not colored light. So this theory of three and four bounce refraction isn't even consistent, as there are many different colored bows on the plain earth, you know, folks, from the particular multicolored one to just red ones, just white ones, and just gray ones. Even night bows, folks, all still very much a mystery to scientists. Now, it is magical, really, folks, because not only are the bows a representation of something we are yet to fully understand as human beings, but these are the bows on the plain Earth few even know about that are so very rare it's only in recent times that we have managed to get the images and recordings of the phenomena. And these magnificence are known as moon bows, fog bows, and snow bows. And an honorable mention goes to sun dogs and ice halos too. They form different patterns, but spectacular still nonetheless. What is truly fascinating though, folks, is that they all still create this very same reflected arc shape from above. Now, rainbows we know are caused by light from the sun during the daytime, a sunbow, if you will. They are referred to also as solar rainbows. But guess what, folks? The moon also as she has her own very special light too. We also covered it in part two of the series. And if you want a refresher, please check that one out too in case you missed it. So in case of the latter, at night time, the rainbow is referred to as a lunar rainbow or moonbow. They are much more dimmer and rarer than solar rainbows, requiring the moon to be near full in order for them to be seen. For the same reason, moonbows are often perceived as white and may be thought of as monochrome. Long exposure photographs will sometimes show the color in this type of rainbow and its shape as an arc. Fog bows form in the same way as rainbows, but they are formed by much smaller cloud and fog droplets that diffract light intensively. They are almost white with faint reds on the outside and blues on the inside. Fog bows are commonly seen over water when air in contact with the cooler water is chilled. But they can be found anywhere if the fog is thin enough for the sun to shine through and the sun is fairly bright. They are very large, almost as big as rainbows, and much broader. They sometimes appear with a glory at the bow's center, and again, folks, shaped in an arc. Fog bows should not be confused with ice halos, though. So, like fog bows, snow bows take place when the sunlight is apparently reflected, it's scattered through the clear snowflakes in the air. Now this, folks, is a very rare phenomenon, 
A snow bow only happens when the sun is low and when it is snowing at either sunrise or sunset, sun up or sundown, which is certainly very rare in the UK. The snow bow also forms a type of arched shape, just like the rain and just like the fog bows of the plain earth. Little is still scientifically known, folks, regarding these beautiful, spectacular forms of the earth bows that fill our sky with the truth right in front of our noses, as the real facts and real science of nature will still baffle the so-called leading heliocientists and practitioners of the earth today regarding reflection and refraction. But the answers are there, folks, staring right back at you if you would only open your eyes to it. Hence this, folks, is exactly the reason why the Earth bows are a real flat Earth fact on the plane. Remember, folks, truth searches for no one. It just waits to be found. Every type of bow on this plane Earth, rain, fog and snow, all seem to show they depict this magically mysterious reflective curved arced shaped from above. Now we will cover what this could be in the next coming parts to the series so hit the sub if you're new and I will see you in part five. Thank you for watching this upload and for your attention this was Nebi also known as Circle. Take good care, see you soon and keep flat.